Beverly Cooper uh, is here. Beverly's a playwright originally from Vancouver, now living here in Ontario. And you've written a play um, called Innocence Lost about Stephen Truscott. Yes. This, as I was telling you, is a fascinating story to me uh, because I remember my aunt uh, giving me a book when I was uh, maybe eight or nine years old. Uh, the first of the first book written about this story, which was this. written by Isabella Borde. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. Yeah, and uh, I was fascinated with the case from then on. Yeah, because it's such it's such a story about our trust in authority and uh, how we question the world. Really. Yeah. What, now you've taken information gathered over a long period of time because this happened. This murder involving Stephen Truscott uh, that he was accused of happened in 1959. Mm -hmm. So you've taken a lot of information from a lot of years and yeah. put it into this play. How did you manage to do that? Well, when I first, I didn't know that much about the story. All I knew that a 14-year-old boy had also almost been hung for the murder of his 12-year-old classmate. That's right. So that's a pretty big story. Uh, so, but I started to delve into court transcripts. I interviewed people. I just really immersed myself in the world. But what I ended up doing was making a, a fictional character, and she's a classmate of Stephen and Lynn, so that's sort of this her emotional. This is Sarah? Yes. Right, it's okay. her emotional journey. So that way I can kind of have her deal with it any way she wants and she she goes through it and she meets Isabella Borde she's a character yep. in the story yep. so it's kind of through her eyes so and it's about you know community how this happened well it shook a community yes, to its it's, very very roots and they're still shaken is I that think right 50 years later uh, when we first did it in Blythe which is right in the middle of that community right it was a community that really didn't want that show to be done because a lot of families had been divided over that story so yeah. it's a really amazing story as the story goes uh, Stephen Trescott was accused of this murder of someone who's kind of an acquaintance or a, a, you know a sort of friend of his and it spent his entire life trying he spent, to clear his name. Yeah, he spent 10 years in jail until he was out on parole. And, and he has been pardoned, correct? Yes, he was acquitted in 2007. Acquitted, and yeah. then the pardon came at some yeah, point. Yeah, and basically that. they gave him $6.5 million so, which, uh, to... Uh, but I always got the impression, I don't know if you've ever st uh, talked to Stephen Truscott. I have. You have. Yes. I always got the impression that money didn't mean a darn thing to him. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think it really did. I think it was clearing his name that he really because wanted. Because he insisted. And I actually, I believed him from the get-go. Yeah, that he had nothing did. to do with this. Well, the people that really knew him really seemed to support that his innocence. But mm. it's also really interesting how this production has kind of come together. It's a um, Centaur show that's now come to the National Arts Center. Yeah. But there's a lot of um, video in it and music. And oh, is it's that really right? kind of a beautiful. So it, multimedia? Multi, multi, multimedia, but it really kind of spans a lot of years. Is so. that different for you? Um, well, the first time we didn't didn't have that much video in it, but it's really beautiful. It really augments the and the feeling of that time, that innocent time in the 1959. It really helps that. Another interesting element is in the lobby before you go in to see the show. There's um, a, one of the an artist in Montreal did a sketch diary of all the rehearsal process and yeah. we've got all the sketches of, of that in the in the lobby cool. before I the show. I can't wait to really, go see it. I'm yeah, definitely going to go see it. It's uh, open last night. Is that right? It previewed last night. But did anybody come in the snowstorm? I couldn't believe how. Many Really? They came. Like I thought nobody was going to come, but see, they came and they seemed to really love it. Yeah, so. see, to people, uh, you know, maybe 50 plus, this is uh, something they remember clear as day, yeah. right? But I think uh, younger people too, like student audiences love it because it's about them, right? And they can't believe this almost happened yeah. to somebody their age. Yeah. And then I think a lot of people say, I think I know a little bit about the story, but I want to find out more about it. Yeah. Uh, so it, it seems to attract a large group. Yeah, I feel like I kind of, I want to go see the show, but I feel like I kind of have an inside edge because I've Well, you'll learn it, a few right? things. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, you'll, there'll be things you didn't know because there's, there, as much as I know about it, there's tons I don't know. Mm. So it's a sort of well of information. Uh, it's at uh, the NAC Theatre until uh, the 16th of March. Uh, yeah. And uh, I know you're having some sessions talking about the making of the uh, the writing of the play and the the entire case with uh, court justice, Supreme Court justice Colin McKinnon involved and things like yeah, that coming up as well. Yeah, right? he'll be able to grill me about my my facts. I guess uh, that's on Saturday. I think before the yeah. matinee, they're yeah. going to talk. We're going to uh, with Jillian Kiley, who's going to interview us. So that's really cool. She'll put me on the spot, make sure I know what I'm talking about. Congratulations! I'm so looking forward to seeing this, Beverly, and I'm Thank glad you could drop by to see us today. Thank you very much. It's called Innocence Lost. Uh, check it out uh, at the NAC Theater uh, from now until uh, March 16th. I'll see you there.